Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with the Mighty Jingles. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a replay submitted in the upcoming new Tier 9 French battleship, the Jean Bart, or however you pronounce it. This replay was actually submitted by another one of the community contributors, he goes by the name of Mr. Tonmu, and he's from Switzerland. He quite likes this ship. And by the time you see the conclusion of this battle, it's not going to be too hard to figure out why. Myself, I'm kind of on the fence about this ship. She doesn't seem to be bad. She certainly looks very nice. Uh, usual disclaimers out of the way, right at the start of this particular video. This, in case it wasn't incredibly obvious, is of course a work in progress. All stats subject to change. What you see is not necessarily what you may end up getting. Look at all of the guns, though. To the rear of the superstructure, those are three triple 152mm gun turrets. She's basically got a light cruiser sitting on her ass. She also has 24 100mm secondary guns. Her anti-aircraft defence is also pretty spectacular. She has a base, default, you know, without installing any upgrades or any captain skills, a default AA rating of 94. All of her secondary gun batteries are dual purpose, all those 152 and 100mm guns also contribute towards her anti-aircraft firepower. In addition to that, she has 28 short range, but very high DPM, 57mm anti-aircraft guns. She doesn't get access to the defensive fire consumable, and a determined carrier captain is going to be able to land hits on one of these things, but they're probably going to regret it, because most of their aircraft are not going to survive. When it comes to her main armament, she's a lot like the Dunkirk. She has two main gun battery turrets with four 380mm guns per turret, and they're mounted at the front of the ship. All of the secondaries tend to be clustered around the rear. There are a couple of things that make this ship interesting, however. The first is the fact that it's a battleship with a speed boost consumable, and the second you can see it down there, it's the third consumable mounted. That's a main gun battery reload booster. So, just like the Japanese destroyers, not all of them, but some of the Japanese destroyers get access to a torpedo reload booster, the Jean Bart gets access to a main gun battery reload booster, and when you activate that, for the next 30 seconds, the reload of your main battery 380mm guns is reduced by 50%. Now, let's just think about that for a minute, because the base reload of these guns is only 26 seconds in the first place. That means under the worst possible circumstances. And what I mean by that is you haven't fitted Main Battery Mod 3 for a 12% faster base reload, the ship hasn't taken any damage, or you haven't taken Adrenaline Rush for an even faster reload, the more damage the ship has taken. So under the worst possible circumstances, you fire the guns, eight 380 millimeter shots out you trigger the reload booster 13 seconds later you fire again and 13 seconds later you fire again and then four seconds after that the reload booster expires now if you have fitted main gun battery mod 3 for 12 percent faster reload and the ship has taken a fair old amount of damage so adrenaline rush has kicked in I would not be at all surprised to see this ship being capable of firing a full salvo of eight 380mm shells every 10 seconds. Yeah, that is actually pretty scary. In fact, if you pay attention, you're about to see it in action. At the moment, Mr. Tom has been shooting at that Frederick the Great over there, but he's getting sick and tired of, well, failing to penetrate his turtle back armour. He's been doing some damage to him but there's a far, far juicier target right there, an almost stationary Iowa. Shots out, reload booster triggered. The Iowa is very lucky to not take a huge amount of damage with the first salvo. But, in the time it took me to say that, the second salvo is on the way out. He is actually reloading the guns every 11 seconds here, and yeah, that was a lot of damage. <laughs> And that 11 second reload is without the benefit of adrenaline rush because the ship has barely taken any damage. So that's an 11 second reload with these 380mm guns with just the benefits of the main gun reload booster consumable and the main gun battery mod number 3 for a 12% faster reload. 
if the ship was 50% damage. With the Dremlin Rush, the guns would be reloading an extra 10% faster still. That is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> yes, we know there's a Minotaur around the corner. He's already dumped his torpedoes, but Mr. Tonbu saw them coming a mile away. He switched to the high explosive now because the Frederick the Great was angling in towards him, but now, of course, he's turning away. What's he doing? Is he coming this way or not? Oh, we really should finish the Iowa off. You see, the Iowa could have gotten away with it if he just stopped shooting, but, well, no, he just had to fire the guns, didn't he? Shots out. Oh, you lucky bastard, but we're not the only one shooting at him, or are we? Yep, no, he's dead. Okay, good. Iowa finished off. Don't really know what the Frederick the Great is doing. I mean, he was going to take a lot more damage if he continued to try to escape to the west, but he may very well have made it. Certainly by turning back towards the south and east, he's killed himself. There's just no way he's going to survive this volume of firepower from this many different angles. Now, that smoke screen up ahead was from the enemy Minotaur, and you would not expect that Minotaur to still be there. Not with this lot coming around the corner and all of his battleship support destroyed. You'd think that. And you'd be wrong. He is, in fact, still inside the smokescreen, just waiting to get his torpedoes away. I have to say, I'm not entirely sure it's going to be worth it. He's dead, and he does manage to land two, three torpedo hits. But only the first two really did damage, because after the first two torpedoes it impacted the bows. The bows were damage saturated, so the third torpedo didn't really do an awful lot. Those three torpedoes did, however, reduce Mr. Tonwu down to about 50% health. And with that reload booster going again, he's firing these guns every 10 seconds. Now, the Des Moines saw what was coming, and he did at least manage to get his ass turned around, so he hasn't been deleted, but he has taken a lot of damage. Of course, Mr. Tonwu has also taken a lot of damage. He's now taken fire from three separate ships, but he's not alone here. He's in the vanguard of the push that's coming around this uh, central island here on the map. But you can see with the adrenaline rush going, this 26 second reload is down to about 19 seconds. There goes the Fletcher. He also avoided the Fletcher's torpedoes. The Des Moines isn't really interested in fighting him anymore. <laughs> and neither is the St. Louis. So he doesn't really need to worry about taking shots from those guys anymore. And he's putting the brakes on so he can keep the island between himself, the Des Moines and the St. Louis, which is incredibly bad news for the Buffalo. The Buffalo popped out, probably thinking he was going to steal the kill on the low health tier 9 French battleship with some support from the Des Moines and the St. Louis, but they're hiding behind the island and he is severely restricted in his ability to manoeuvre because there's an island to his left, so he couldn't pull a left turn. There's a Jean Bart to his right. <laughs> and he probably didn't want to get any closer, which meant he was forced to sail broadside on to these guns in a light cruiser. And by some miracle, he's not actually dead yet. Although he will be if Mr. Ton Mu has anything to say about it. Oh, he's... He's playing a dangerous game here. His ship has taken a lot of damage. But wait, he's managed to put himself in a spot where none of these enemy ships actually have a direct line of sight. So he's now undetected. He has nothing to lose by taking the final shot, and he gets the kill on the buffalo. Now, before we all start getting carried away about the amount of firepower this ship can dish out when it's badly damaged, and it is running that reload booster, this ship does also take a lot of damage particularly from cruisers far and high explosive, and that includes heavy cruisers with 203mm guns like the Des Moines, and light cruisers with 152mm guns where the captain has the IFHE skill, because this ship's deck armour is 32mm everywhere. And it's a tier 9 battleship, so the bow and stern are also 32mm. So 203mm HE, oh hello. Some torpedoes, yeah we can avoid those. 203mm HE and 152mm HE with the IFHE skill are going to do a lot of damage to this ship. Of course the ship is capable of doing a lot of damage in return. He's up to 200,000 damage done. 
But before we all get too carried away about the firepower, let's just remember that targets like that Ibuki over there that are sailing broadside onto him, targets like the Buffalo earlier that was sailing broadside onto him, and the Iowa before that, targets that were just begging for a paddling. Like the paddling that he just administered to that Ibuki. There's another 20,000 damage. 225,000 damage done now. How much of the savage kicking that he's been administering throughout the course of this game is down to these guns and that reload booster? And how much of it is down to players like the Iowa, the Buffalo, the Ibuki, and this Republic, who have consistently been making themselves the best possible target for guns of any calibre? I think under normal circumstances you can expect the Jean Bart to be an absolute terror when it comes to cruisers. Normally you wouldn't expect this ship to be doing this kind of damage. Hang on a second. Oh yeah, of course, he's firing at the Ibuki. <laughs> or is he? Yeah, those are his secondaries. Yeah, I thought Mr. Tonmu was safe there when I realised there was an Ibuki crossing his T to the rear, presenting a perfect target to the Republic, who wasn't able to capitalise on it. But how much of this 244,000 damage would you expect to see under the normal course of events when maybe the enemy team weren't all quite so keen to give the best possible target to your guns? Honestly, I'm not entirely sure it's going to make much difference. Because normally, if you have a battleship leading the charge towards you and you need to turn to get away, you wait until he's fired and then you execute the turn thinking that you have 25 to 30 seconds of grace in order to change direction and get away. Well, that isn't necessarily the case with this thing. In fact, turning away from the Jean Bart, right before it activates that reload booster, will probably end up being the last mistake you ever make. Unfortunately, the match ended before Mr. Tonmu could improve on his 256, nearly 257,000 damage, and deliver an even more comprehensive paddling to that enemy conqueror. So what do you think of this ship? Balanced? Overpowered? Broken? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and thank you to Mr. Tonmu for sending this replay in. I'll put a link down below in the video description to his Twitch channel, where he regularly broadcasts World of Warships. Uh, he's from Switzerland, but he's French-speaking, so any of our French followers out there who are looking for somebody who speaks a civilized language, <laughs> you know where to go. In the meantime, as always, hope you enjoyed today's video, take care, and I'll catch you next time.